Hello again, everyone. I am Old Dragon, and welcome to a new Let's Play. Um, after I finished uh, Curse of the Azure Bonds, I was considering doing something else, but uh, I decided uh, might as well go through uh, Secret Silver Blades as well. Um, so that's what we're going to start on today. Uh, if you've played this before, uh, you know that, like the beginning of Curse of the Azure Bonds, you start with nothing, so we got to spend time with fairly crummy equipment. Um, but uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. There's uh, <clears throat> some significant changes to the game, um, game system for this one. So you, you'll see that shortly. Okay, and uh, when you first launch it, you'll get these uh, uh, options. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, EGA, go with ad lib, and mouse, even though I probably won't use it very often. I'll go with the default save. Um, so anyway, loading, please wait. And music for the very first time. Got music on the startup. Uh, we've got another nice big uh, image. Um, Color-wise, it's nicer than the uh, um, one for Curse of the Azure Bonds, since that was just a scan of the uh, book cover, and uh, it was just very, very blue, which I kind of found frustrating. Uh, I never liked that very much. A Forgotten Realms Fantasy Roleplaying Epic Volume Three. So. It's a, a castle. Looks like it's uh, covered in ice or spider webs or something. Secret of the Silver Blades. And of course, like Curse of the Azure Bonds, we could import our characters into this. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that since I want to play through with the same team uh, through all the games. Oh, and, uh, yeah, uh, you might have noticed by now, um, I have a cold. Uh, it was a question of either doing more Let's Plays or waiting for two weeks for this cold to go away, so I figured I might as well just do more Let's Plays. Um, this cold, uh, when I get colds, they, they last forever. So, anyway, let's go ahead and hit play. And we can go ahead and add characters to the party from Curse. And um, it does not give you an option to look for the directory or anything like that or anything. You know, these save uh, character saves need to be in the same directory. So uh, what you need to do after Curse of the Azure Bonds is uh, remove them all from your um, uh, uh, um, uh, remove them all from your from your party in uh, at the end of Curse of the Azure Bonds, or before, I don't think it matters if you complete Curse of the Azure Bonds or not. Um, uh, so you remove them all and then you need to copy your character files over to the save directory for Secret of the Silver Blades. Um, so we'll go ahead and, uh, oh, and some other changes. Um, for some reason, um, Pool of Radiance and Curse of the Azure Bonds uh, to go up and down on these menus required you to use uh, on the numeric keypad 1 and 7. Uh, 1 being down, 7 being up, I do not know why. Um, but now we can use uh, uh, either 2 or 8, or the arrow keys. Uh, so yeah, sometimes I'm probably going to try to select someone else and not. And it's because I'm used to the 1 and 7 rather than 2 and 8 and arrow keys kind of thing. So anyway, I'll go ahead and add, 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 and I'm forgetting exactly which one my cleric is. Uh, I think it's her. Okay. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. So here we are. Um, once again, armor class 6. Boy, doesn't this look familiar. Let's go ahead and view characters. Um, so, it kept the uh, strength and dexterity, for example, that uh, Moonshadow had, but you'll notice these asterisks near them. That means they're modified. Uh, the save game file for Curse of the Azure Bonds had, uh, and Secret, well, like Curse of the Azure Bonds and unlike Pool of Radiance, 
um, these uh, um, Secret of Silver Blades has two entries for each stat um, your original and your modified so when you have when there's a difference between those that's when you have these asterisks um, and I have no items so let's look at everyone else so oops you so yeah um, oddly enough it doesn't include it hmm. okay so I still have my uh, 24 strength and my 21 strength uh, which were the um, you know from the the potion of giant strength and the uh, girdle of storm giant strength uh, so you know uh, those will probably go away the second I do anything with like a strength spell or get hit by a raven feebleman or something like that but we'll see how long we can keep those and uh, I just remembered that I did go into the save file for these guys and I, I I decided I'll, I'll leave the strength alone, but I, I said, you know, I want the 19 dexterity for him. Uh, I want to have the permanent effects of the 19 constitution and 17 charisma, so, you know. Uh, I'm not sure if this game actually includes the uh, regeneration, um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, begin adventuring. And here we have the copy protection. Uh, whereas Pool of Radiance and Curse of the Azure Bonds had the code wheel, uh, all the other games, every single uh, one of them, including uh, um, Unlimited Adventures, uh, require you to look up a word in like the clue in the, the Adventures journal. So what is word number three? And, oh, journal entry thirty. It's journal page thirty-three. Or number three gems. And I could probably go in and remove these all, but the problem is one of the problems is that the, the length is variable. You have grown bored with peace and yearn for a new adventure. Suddenly a dreaming dreamlike lassitude overcomes you. It feels as though you are floating high above the ground. A valley resolves itself below you. At its base is a small walled town. Higher up is a mine shaft surrounded by ruins. The top of the valley is filled with a shimmering glacier. Looking at the glacier, you feel a sense of disquiet. Peering closer, you note a castle embedded at its icy heart. You are sure that something waits there. Something powerful and evil. So yeah, you can see the... I'm not sure if you can see my cursor or not, um, but you can see the uh, castle right there. Uh, that's the mine entrance, these are the ruins, and there's the new town. Suddenly you are rushing closer to the ruins. Below you appears an ancient well surrounded by people. There is a flash and you lie on the ground dazed. Faces gather around as you slip into unconsciousness. Greetings, I am glad to see you are awake. I am Priam, mayor of New Vertigris and your host. We are sorry for any inconveniences, but our needs are great. We called upon the Well of Knowledge to provide us with champions. You arrived, albeit dazed and bereft of equipment." And I vaguely recall somewhere that it says that we arrived completely naked, which, considering that there are four females in the party with 18 charisma, um, must have been quite the sight. He continues, and you recorded in journal entry 37. Yay, our first journal entry! <clears throat> Not a very long one. Mayor's Introduction We are a small town of miners in desperate straits. Three months ago we opened a new shaft and monsters boiled forth. Oh wait, no, I guess it's a longer one than I thought. Perhaps this is a gateway to the abyss. In any case, we lost many comrades as the monsters have... I'm doing his voice wrong, aren't I? Perhaps this is a gateway to the abyss. In any case, we lost many comrades as the monsters have climbed up level after level of the mine. Now they are invading the nearby ruins. Soon they will reach New Vertigris. To add to our problems, something has captured the Well of Knowledge. 
The well imparts information, occasionally grants wishes, and controls the teleporter in my house. If you free the well, then you can use the teleporter to move through the ruins. Once the well is protected, you must descend into the mines and stop these horrors from emerging. Others have tried, but none have returned. You must save us before we are overwhelmed. We scraped together some equipment and money for you. Alas, this is all we have. And we get 2,500 experience just for him giving us stuff. That doesn't seem like something very experience-worthy. So, we get 20 gems, and we get some items. So, first of all, let me go ahead and... Actually, I think I'll just take have him take all the money, all the gems... And let's take the items. Okay, so we've got a mage scroll with three spells. Uh, 30 arrows plus one, leather armor plus one, scale mail plus two, gauntlets of ogre power, which of course I don't actually need. Wand of ice storm, bracers AC6, halberd plus two, mace plus one, longsword plus one, shield plus two, plate mail plus one. So, um, I will have Ald, my paladin, uh, take the plate mail, shield, and longsword. I will have Crow take the halberd. Uh, oh, and uh, the uh, scale mail plus two. And Island Wee will take the mace plus one. And Moon Shadow will take the 30 arrows plus one, the leather armor plus one. Uh, for now, the gauntlets of ogre power. And Ellie will take uh, the Mage Scroll, Wand of Ice Storm, Bracers AC6. So let's go ahead and start equipping. I'm go ahead and equip that. Equip that and equip that. And I'll go ahead and equip that and that. I am not going to equip the uh, Gauntlets of Ogre Power unless I lose my strength there. And if I, at some point, I get really annoyed at the game and just flat out set it at... 1800, then I'll, I'll give it to an NPC. Um, she did not get anything. She got the Mace plus one. And he got the Halberd plus two and the Scale Mail plus two. And he got the Plate Mail, Shield, and Longsword. Okay. So, I've got an AC negative five, zero, six, six, two, and three. Wow. So crappy. <coughs> Okay. You may use my house as a base of operations. There is an armory and, an, and a mage who might provide you with more equipment. There is a bookish group of mages called the Black Circle who wanders the area. Do not fear them. One even sells magic items in town. Keep to the ma mapped portions of the ruins. The streets are a maze to the unwary. In the northernmost room of my house is a teleporter to the Well of Knowledge, which still works. It is the quickest way to reach the well... It is the quickest way to reach the well. The chalked arrows in the ruins point roughly towards town. Okay, so, um, if you have the Adventurer's Journal, um, then there, you will notice that, uh, at the very beginning, on, um, let's see, what page is that actually on? Page one, uh, after the table of contents. Um, you have a two-page map that leads to the well and the mine entrance. Uh, and there are portions leading off the map, but those are unmapped. So, um, uh, yeah, if you don't have this, yeah, you're kind of in trouble, because it is a real maze. Um, but uh, anyway, we are coming up on the end of uh, our 15 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now, and uh, we'll pick it up uh, buying new equipment and stuff in the next video.